I'm Dr. Weiner. This is my dog Murphy. He's a nine year old boxer mix. Come here, Murphy. Good boy. And we're in central Florida, sunny weather. I just wanted to talk about uh, foreign bodies today. Let's say he has his favorite toy. Usually it's this guy, but lately he's really been liking this little cat toy. We have two cats inside the house. And you can see for Murphy, this toy can disappear pretty easily. And if that happens to you, you know, maybe we talk about what are some things to look for, or uh, what do you do if that happens. So, first things that you might notice are maybe your dog's lethargic. He's sleeping a lot, maybe mopey, just not really acting right. Uh, other things, other common signs are they're vomiting. So if it's in, if it, gets, if it swallows it, it gets stuck in the stomach. Uh, things aren't moving down as well as it should. Um, so he might bring things up. So he's vomiting, maybe he's not eating, or if he does eat, he just brings it right back up. Um, sometimes they might still poop and all that, but not always. Um, and he's just not quite acting right. Maybe he's actually acting painful. Sometimes if their belly hurts, they might actually stretch, um, and that could be a sign of pain. Uh, signs of nausea, uh, other than obviously the retching, you know, bleh, bleh, bleh. Uh, they can be uh, extra salivating or lots of, you know, the shoestrings um, or lots of lip clipping, like lots of that. So if you see that and you know that he ate something or maybe even just suspect it, maybe you should go see your veterinarian and just have it checked out. Now, what are some things to expect when you go to see your vet? Well, first I'll take a history, you know, weight, temperature, all that stuff. Um, during the uh, exam, they'll ask you, what do you think he ate, how long ago, what has his clinical signs have been, has he been vomiting, how many times, what does it look like, all that sort of stuff. Uh, during the full physical exam, they'll still look at him from head to toe, eyes, ears, nose, throat, listen to his chest, uh, feel his belly, all that stuff. Um, they might notice that he's a little dehydrated, he's been vomiting a lot, Maybe they'll notice that his belly hurts when they press on his belly. Um, but otherwise, sometimes the physical exam is fairly unremarkable. Um, if they suggest, or if they think there's definitely a history of uh, eating something, um, they might suggest, why don't we take some x-rays to look at. Um, but of course, not feeling well and vomiting aren't specific for foreign bodies. If we're not 100% sure that you ate something, you might want to run some other tests just to make sure we're not getting tunnel vision like it has to be. But in this instance, since we're talking about foreign bodies, let's just run. So let's say they did lower. Some evidence of a foreign body but they're not quite sure then what's the next step uh, maybe they do uh, just retake the x-rays after you know, give them some fluids give them some time let's recheck the x-rays and see what they look like in, in a couple hours or maybe in the morning if he's otherwise stable um, that way you can say yeah gas patterns moving and we don't have to cut um, or you know 
it looks about the same, or maybe even worse, we need to take uh, further measures to make it feel better. Um, another thing is uh, a barium study, which means we give them some contrast material. So we uh, make them swallow this liquid stuff and that shows up on the x-ray. You actually follow it uh, as it goes down the digestive tract. Um, and if that's not emptying uh, within a certain amount of time or it gets stuck somewhere, so it's passing through the colon, then you know you have a problem. Once you have a foreign body diagnosed or an obstruction diagnosed, then you need to take action. And you can't always tell is it going to pass or not. Some dogs pass amazing things. We've seen dogs pass things like knives and uh, entire socks um, and just crazy things, but sometimes they don't. Um, now, if they don't, or if you if they know that they have eaten something, um, then what do you do? Well, if you leave it in there and just hope that it passes, um, you, you do run the risk of things getting worse. So if the gut isn't moving appropriately um, as they're vomiting or um, as things are moving, electrolytes are moving from uh, the cells and everything into that space and then they're vomiting it up. That actually messes with their their metabolism, their acid base balance, and they can get really sick from that. Not only dehydrated, but it messes with the normal environment that uh, cells function, and that might make them go and uh, get pretty sick. Uh, other things that can happen is if guts aren't moving appropriately, uh, they might actually lose their blood supply, uh, and that can make them pretty sick as well. Um, the longer things go, the more compromised those tissues might become. Now, usually if there's a confirmed obstruction, the way to get it is surgery. Um, some clinics, depending on where it is or what it is, if it's in the stomach, might be able to get it through endoscopy where you take a, you know, while they're sleeping, uh, stick a tube with a, a camera with a tube on it and pull it out that way. Not all clinics have that uh, capability. Uh, and some things might be out of its reach as well. So if it's in the intestines, that doesn't really work. Um, some clinics might just go right into surgery and do an exploratory where they kind of cut from here to here and just take a look at everything that's going on. Once that happens, you can good look at everything that's going on. It's usually a lot of pain for the viable and healthy um, where you just kind of cut and uh, take that our material out, suture them up, and you're good to go? Or is there some tissue that's actually kind of damaged and you need to remove that so there aren't any problems? Uh, let's say it's a simple foreign body in the stomach. You open uh, the belly up and all the tissues look pretty good. So uh, you open them up and everything looks good, but you can actually feel a hard, let's say you feel this in the stomach. And what you do is you make a small incision in the stomach wall, pull this out, make sure there isn't anything else in there, flush really, really well, close up the stomach, you look at the rest of the dog, make sure there aren't any other things that you may have eaten that we're not aware of, uh, make sure we're not missing anything else, flush really, really well, solution to pollution is dilution. Um, once you're confident everything else looks really good, close everything up and uh, let them recover. Um, and they typically do pretty well. Um, some other surgeries, especially if it's uh, further down in the intestinal tract in his, uh, let's say his, his small intestine, let's say something's been stuck for a little while, and you open them up, and there's a uh, segment of intestine that's purple or black. That's dangerous if you leave that. So you actually have to remove that section of gut and uh, tie those ends together. Obviously that increases risk. Uh, so that's why we want to get to these foreign bodies um, as, as soon as we can. So let's say we do the surgery and everything goes really, really well. Obviously we have them on really good pain medications, fluids, uh, and then gastric protectants to help uh, protect the inside of the uh, stomach wall and all that. We might have them uh, in the hospital for like a night or so. Uh, and then they do uh, pretty well. So that's sort of a brief uh, 
summary of what to expect if you suspect that your dog has a foreign body, maybe, maybe ate something that um, he shouldn't have, and uh, that's why you go to the vet, make sure everything's okay, and uh, make him feel better as soon as we can.